Greetings, Freedom Family. Thank you for joining us for service today. If this is your first time with us, welcome. We are so happy you joined us. Please leave your name and a comment so that we know you're here. Also, please be sure to follow us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You can even leave your email in the comments if you would like to be contacted. Please remember we have Shava prayer on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. led by Pastor Jerry Gurley. You can join us by calling into the Zoom information on the screen. We also have Bible study on YouTube every Thursday at 7 p.m. led by our senior pastor, Freddie Fillmore. And of course, we have service every Sunday at noon on Facebook and YouTube. If you would like to pay your tithes and offerings, there are three ways to give. You can give via Cash App, you can visit our website to pay online, or you can mail a check to the church. Now, please join us in the reading of our confession. We, the body of believers at Freedom Ministries Church, live in perfect harmony and full agreement with the Word of God, and there's no division among us. Every service is full of God's love, His praise, His revelation, and His power. Thousands of believers have been added to Freedom Ministry Church, both men, women, and children, and each member is fully committed to the work of the Lord. People are flowing into Freedom Ministry Church, and those who are coming with sicknesses or who are troubled with foul spirits are all cured. There is not one feeble among us. All the members of our congregation are tithers and we are living under an open heaven. We are bold in our witness and are reigning as kings in the earth. We are doers of the word of God and are experiencing only success and victory in every area of life. This church is prospering financially, having more than enough to meet the needs of every situation. We are redeemed from poverty, sickness, and spiritual death, and no weapon formed against us prospers. Thank you, Father, for our Memorial Life Center, for your blessings upon this church, and for using us to establish your word throughout the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you again for joining us. Feel free to leave a few amens and heart emojis in the comments. Now, I pray you enjoy this week's message. Welcome to another online service brought to you by Freedom Ministries here in Apopka, Florida. My name is Minister Tony Jenkins, and we are led by Pastor Freddie Fillmore, and we want to thank you for joining us this Sunday, this first Sunday of September 2021. We give God the glory because it is Him while we are here today. It is Him while we exist. It is Him that I'm able to come before you today, and I thank God. While we're doing that, would you get your Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 17. We're going to read verses 38. Then we're going to skip down to 46 and 47. 1 Samuel 17, 38, 46 and 47. And while you're doing, it, doing that, let us pray. Father, I thank you again for this awesome opportunity that you have given your son to come before your people to preach your word. And Lord God, as always, I do not take this for granted, Father, because I understand the seriousness of those who preach the word of God. And Father, I ask that you would be I would be led by you and that you would direct my path as I speak to your people a right now word. Word, I give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 38. And it reads, So Saul clothed David with his armor, and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not Tested them. Underline that word tested. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off. And now let us go to verse 46 and 47. This day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day, 
I will give the, ca the, caucus, the caucuses of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Verse 47, then all this assembly shall know that the Lord does not save with sword and spear for the battle. Right, underline that word, the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into my hands. My message today is battle tested. Battle tested. Now, when you read Psalms, uh, I'm going to say uh, Samuel, first, first Samuel chapter 17, you would notice that David was sent to the battle not to fight Goliath, but to bring supply to his brothers because his dad, Jesse, had sent him to the battle. And while David came to the battle, he overheard what the people were saying in the Israel camp of what Saul would give that what Saul would give to the person that will kill Goliath. And so David was introduced to Saul because they heard of the confidence of David. And so David had told Saul that he would go and fight against Goliath. And Saul said to David, you are a youth. You are not able to fight against this Philistine because you are a youth. And this man from his youth have been a man of war. So basically Saul was saying, David, you have no chance. You don't, you don't stand a chance. If the people that I have brought out here, like your three oldest brothers, if they are scared, scared of Goliath, then who are you, David? But Saul did not know that God had already battle tested David for this moment. And then David began to testify and he told Saul that I have killed the bear and the lion, the two most fierce beasts in the wilderness, the bear and the lion. He said, I have killed them. And he said, this uncircumcised Philistine is going to be just like them. And so Saul said this to David. He said, go. Go. Now, I want y'all to understand that Saul had put all his trust in David, whom he did not, uh, whom, whom Saul had put all his trust in David, because if David had lost against the Philistine, then remember, Goliath made a decree that you send a man out and fight me, and if I prevail over him, then we will conquer you guys. But if he prevail over me, then y'all will win against the Philistines. So Saul, when Saul told David to go, Saul was placing the whole Israelite army in David's hand. But David was ready for the battle. And when, when, when Goliath saw David, Goliath began to mock David. He began to laugh. And he told David that he was going to feed his carcasses to the birds. And David said this. You come at me with a sword and a spear. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. And he said this day. He was going to cut off Goliath's head. Why? Because he had been battle tested. One of the most expensive watches. That we can buy. It's called a Rolex. The average cost of a Rolex is around $7,000 to $12,000. The reason for this high cost is because the quality of work it takes to develop the watch is very high. In order to live up to the high expectation, the Rolex watch must go through the most extreme conditions Im imaginable. The tests that the Rolex watch go through are designed to ensure that the Rolex remain fully functional even in the harshest of conditions. They take that Rolex watch 
and they put it through all these conditions, all these extreme conditions, conditions to test it. And the reason why they do it is because they want the quality of their product not to fail when it has been through rugged, when it has been through a lot of uh, wear and tear. We as believers, when we go through our trials, our trials are designed to make us better so that when we come out, we are fully functional and equipped to do the work of the Lord. First Peter chapter four, verse 12 says this. First Peter chapter four, verses 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange, strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Why? When you go through your trials. Are you having a pity party or saying why? Why this happening to me? No, 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 no. You don't understand. God is testing his product because he has something greater for you to do. So going back to the Rolex watch, you do not buy a Rolex watch, watch to tell time. In that case, you can get a watch like this. I bought this watch for about $50. If I want to tell time, I can get a watch like this. You do not buy a Rolex watch to tell time. You buy a Rolex watch for time oh you didn't understand me i said you buy it for time you buy the rolex rolex watch to last the test of time and the reason why it can last the test of time is because the rolex watch have been tested i'm talking about better tested now Never trust anything or anyone who haven't been tested. For instance, when we go buy a car, the first thing we do is we take the car for what? A drive test. Never see a car you like and just get in it and give them your money. No, you better test that car out. You do a drive test and then you check up under the hood. You, you, you test the oil. You, you, you test all the fluids in it. You check the tires because you want to make sure when you buy that car that it's going to last. So you test it. Singles, before you say I do to anyone, you better test them. This is why so many marriages end up in divorce, because we keep marrying people whom we haven't tested. Everything, fellas, that wear a skirt is not marriage material. And to you ladies, just because he put on his pants, don't make him marriage material. You better test. And see, are they qualified to be married? This is why the cars that we buy tend to last longer than our marriages. Because our cars have been tested. I bought, I, matter of fact, I have a 2001 Mercedes E320. That car is 20 years old this year, and I still have it. Why? Because they tested the car not for uh, just for you to drive it, but for it to last throughout the time. The reason why we honor people like Pastor and Mother Fillmore is because they have been married for over 50 years. That tells me that they've been battle tested. My mother and father. I am 51 years old this year. Just had a birthday, August 29th. My mother and father have been married for 51 years. That tells me that they have been battle, battle tested. No product, y'all listen to me. No product ever leaves the manufacturer before. It is tested. I'm going to say that one more time. 
No product that you would buy, whether it be clothes, whether it be furniture, whatever it may be, it will not leave the manufacturer unless they have tested it. Right here, this is a smartphone. Before this smartphone left the manufacturer, they tested it. This phone can receive phone calls. How do I know that? Because they tested it. This phone can receive emails. How do I know that? Because they tested it. And this phone can take pictures. How do I know that? It's because they've already tested it. So God, who is the maker of all mankind, will never use anyone whom he hasn't tested. Never. And God will only trust those whom he has tested. Okay, you don't believe me. Turn your Bibles to Mark chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. This is Jesus right before he was, this was Jesus right when he was baptized by John the Baptist, before he ever preached a sermon, before he ever cast out one demon, before he ever healed the sick. Look what happened to Jesus. Because God would only trust those whom he tested. It says, immediately, the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days. And if you know anything about the number of 40, that number 40 means to be tested. So he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted. Tempted is simply a test. By who? By Satan. Now, if Jesus, full of power, God in the flesh, before he went out and did his ministry, had to be tested, who do you think you are? Because God will never use anyone before he tests them. You got saved. Then you learn a couple of scriptures. And now you say, I'm ready for the ministry. No, you're not. You're not ready. So sit down until God take you through the test. Before God would trust Joseph to be second um, amongst uh, under Pharaoh, God had to test Joseph. So Joseph had to be sown into slavery. He had to be accused by Potiphar's wife. He had to be put in prison for years. Because God was testing him because God only trusts those whom he tested. And when Joseph passed the test, God was able to trust him to be over the whole land of Egypt. Because he had been tested. You know what? There are some preachers preaching right now. Who got ordained for the ministry. Who God never Tested. Because God, once again, only trusts those whom he has tested. This is why you want to know why preachers are falling like flies. You want to know why you can't trust some of these preachers. It's because they never been tested by God. I'm talking about battle tested. Trust, when I say the word trust, trust is test over time. Trust, when you trust someone, that means that over a period of time, that person have been faithful. And so now you can trust them. You know, I've been in this ministry for over 20 something years. And during those 20 something years, the pastor have been watching me. And it took almost 26 years for me to become ordained because I've been faithful. 
and you get saved three months and now you want to go out. Uh uh, it don't work like that. You have to be tested. I'll never forget when I was working at my daddy's job, we was playing basketball. Had no idea that the pastor was outside watching. He pulled up. And something happened. I can't remember what happened, but somebody either called a foul on me or, or, or I didn't foul them. And pastor saw the whole thing. I didn't argue. I didn't cuss. I just handed him the ball. And then I looked and there was pastor. Pastor was like, because I never knew he was there. Because it's not what you do inside the church. It's what you do outside the church. So can you be trusted? Trust is test over time. And if you plan to be used by God, that's a good thing. Then wait for God to test you. Now, if you don't believe me. In the book of Acts, I don't have all you don't have to go there, but the books of Acts are chapter 19. Just read that. It talks about the seven sons of Sceva. And in this chapter, it talks about where where Paul there. He, God was 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 uh, you are uh, doing some unusual miracles. The Bible says by the hand of Paul that they would take handkerchiefs and they would take aprons that had been on Paul and they would take it and, and, and put it on sick people. And the handkerchief was healing the people and driving out the evil spirits. And here come the seven sons of Sceva who never been tested. And also the Bible said there were some Jewish exorcists who would exercise and casting out demons. And look, they, look they, 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 they said this. They said that we're going to call on the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, and we exercise you demons to come out. The Bible says that the evil spirits said to them, Jesus, we know. He's been tested. Paul, we know. Because he's been tested. But who are you? And the Bible records that the demons that, that was that was the evil spirits that was in the man jumped out of the man and into the seven sons of Sceva and the Jewish exorcist. And the Bible says that it woke them to the point that their clothes were they was naked and wounded because they had not been tested. You better be careful. Because these kinds of demons ain't coming out. Like Jesus said. Except by fasting and prayer. You have to be tested. Because you mess around and mess with the wrong demon. That demon is going to recognize that you haven't been tested. And going to put a whooping on you that you have never had before. Because you are not tested. Thank you, Lord God. In order for God, you say, I want to go to the next level. God, I want to be used by you. Well, in order for God to take you to the next level, you must be tested. Just like here in America. If you want to go to the next grade, you have to be tested. If you want to get a promotion, you have to be tested. If you want to get a driver's license, the government won't trust you until they test you. Same is with God. God must test his product to make sure it is fit and qualified to do the work. Why? Because his name is at stake. Go back to the smartphone. This smartphone was made by Samsung. And when the product is ready to leave the plant, the first thing they do it, the last thing that they do is they put their name on the product. So when God sends you out, his name is at stake. So he must test his product to make sure it won't fail when it comes up against opposition. Listen to this. You never grow in good times. Never. 
No one grows in good time, even a plant. A plant only grows when it goes into the soil and it dies and the soil begins to uh, whatever it does to the plant. And it takes the rain, it takes the sun, it takes the fertilizer, it takes all those things to make the plant grow. Why? Because you never grow in good times. You grow by suffering. Hebrews 5 and 8 says this. Though he was a son, yet he learned. That word learned means to grow. Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things he suffered. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about the one that we're supposed to pattern our life after. He grew by suffering. And then 1 Peter 5 and 10 says this. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus after you have suffered a while. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. And the only way that's going to happen is you got to suffer. And most of us don't want to suffer. When you see someone that has a fit body bill, I mean, they got a six pack muscles just ripping off all over their body. What you don't understand is that body went through a lot of suffering. If you want to uh, uh, have be in that shape or if you're trying to lose weight, you are going to have to suffer because you never grow in good times. Now, in my closing, I want to say to you that never question an artist while he's still working. I'm going to say that one more time. Never question an artist while he is still working. Because though the art that you're looking at is not finished, to the artist, it is already finished. So when God begins to work on you, never question God. Because once he starts working on you, he's already finished. Because when an artist starts painting, in his mind, he's already finished the painting. And then he starts. One of my favorite scriptures, and I believe it's Isaiah 46. And what it talks about is that God is God and there is no other God like him who finishes and then he backs up and he starts. And there is no other God like that. And so Philippians chapter one, verse six says this. Being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a great or good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So when God gets ready to send you forward, when God get ready to use you in the ministry, he's already completed the work but yet he has to take you through the process because God will never use anyone before he tests them. Let us pray. Father, I just thank you once again for your awesome word, Lord God. And God, I know that there's someone out there who may be going through some tests right now and may not understand why they're going through all the things that they're going through. But you said in your word, Lord, think it not strange, strange concerning the fire, fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. And Father, you said in your word, I just read it, 
that after you have suffered a while, that you be perfected, established, strengthened, and you be settled. So Father, I pray that your hand of mercy will be upon your people, those who, who, who are hurting right now in the ministry, those who want to be used by you, that you will give them an understanding that when the time is right, you would begin to work on your product. So Father, I thank you for all your wisdom, your understanding, and your knowledge to know that there is no God like you. And Father, we thank you and we call it done because you are the master manufacturer and you will never put us in a position where you haven't equipped us to do or finish the work i thank you and i lift you up in jesus name amen now we're gonna get ready for our communion and the bible says that as often as you do this you do this and my remembrance. So if you will, you will take the wafer that represents his broken body and let's break it and let us eat. And then you take the juice which represents the blood. For without the blood, there can be no remission of sin. So we drink the blood because of what you did on Calvary for us. I want to remind you of Shabbat prayer on Wednesdays, on Tuesdays, 7 o'clock by Pastor Jerry Gurley. And on Thursday night, Bible study by our very own, the man himself, Pastor Freddie Fillmore Sr. And until next Sunday, we would say that God bless you and keep you until we meet again. Thank you. God bless you.